y'all welcome to my channel today I'm going to be sharing with you how I water all of my house plants I will dive a little bit into fertilizer as well because that's not as complicated of a topic however uh, watering this is gonna take a long time <laughs> basically I'm going to go over pretty much all the house plants that I personally have I don't have all the common house plants but I have a whole lot of them and I have a couple varieties of certain ones so I mean I have over 200 plants I think at this point and I've had some other plants that haven't been quite successful with my watering regime so I'll go over those a little bit as well but I wanted to share with you how I keep my house plants low maintenance for me my two-week schedule is not strict by any means it can fluctuate which is totally fine i mean some weeks i don't have enough time to water on the same day that i normally do i watch my plants and some of them that need to be watered more frequently i like definitely need to try to water them by two weeks i will sprinkle some water on them and that will get me by until i can have time to water the rest of them but most of my plants even though they might not necessarily like it as much they can get through that and it'll be fine for them. And during the winter time, usually my plants can go longer because it's nice and cool and so they're not evaporating water as quickly, if that makes sense. Your plants, they transpire through the leaves. When we breathe, water comes out, right? And we sweat and get rid of water from our bodies. Plants don't sweat really, but they transpire and you know when you have them all together like I have two plants right here this one is kind of creating a little bit of humidity for this one so when you have them all together it can kind of help so there are certain plants that I've figured out that if I keep them together with other ones then they do better plants like my calatheas and my maranta those do better with like my ferns and if I pack them in with some other plants around them, then they can do a little better. And generally in the winter time when I have my heater on and the house gets really dry, I'll put a little humidifier around them. And that makes it to where I don't have to change my watering schedule too much. The only time that I really need to change my watering schedule is the spring. In the springtime, the temperature gets warmer, but it's not warm enough yet to use the swamp cooler so the swamp cooler puts humidity into the house and that helps my plants go longer but in the spring I don't have that humidity plus it's warmer than in the winter time so I have to water my plants a little bit more in the spring I definitely have to keep a two-week schedule it's a little bit of a shorter two-week schedule whereas right now like from the summer through the winter I can have a longer two-week schedule so it's not it's very subjective basically and you just have to know what will work well with your plants because you're gonna have more humidity than me or you could have less depending on if you don't have like a swamp cooler in the summer, right? So if you have uh, like an HVAC, then you're going to need to consider that during the summertime a little bit more unless you keep your house really cool. My house can get really warm in the summer, like in the middle of the day or later midday. My and I'm like cooking in my kitchen, it can be like 80 degrees in my house, but my plants are fine because there's the humidity from the swamp cooler. But then in the winter time, it gets really dry from the heater and I live in a really dry climate. So I like to use the humidifier actually just for us. I don't think that my plants really need it. They benefit from it, but not enough to make me feel like I have to have humidifiers everywhere. I just have a little one, it's like about like this big. <laughs> It's not that big and I just keep it in a section in my living room that we mostly spend the most time in so my plants benefit from it that way so not all plants need to be watered every two weeks I mean some plants like my phytonias my nerve plants they need a little bit more consideration and care I have a little section of plants that I keep an eye on a little bit more it used to be in my craft room but I don't go in my craft room enough because it's kind of mostly used as a storage room because I usually do projects in the kitchen. So the plants in there didn't always fare as well. It was a nice eastern window, so the plants like the light in there, but if I didn't remember to water them 
in time, then they would not do well. So I've lost a few plants that way because sometimes I am very neglectful. So now I keep those kinds of plants around my kitchen sink because it's a lot easier to water them that way. And I just will take all the water from cups, like extra water, and I give that to them too. So like collate my, um, is it a medallion maranta or calathea that I have over there? That one loves that, of course, because they don't like calatheas and marantas and stromanthes, whatever. They don't like a lot of like chemicals in their water. They like to have filtered water, basically. So that one, I don't really actually find that that's completely all the way necessary. I have a calathea upstairs in my bedroom that I don't always give it filtered water. I sometimes do, but that's like every other time that I water it, sometimes less than that. So it's not really that big of a deal for my water in my area, even though we do have chlor chloramine and fluoride and stuff in our water. I don't know, I don't feel like they, it bothers them. Same with my Dracenias. Dracenias are supposed to like to have filtered water, but they don't seem to mind, so. Um, I'm also going to cover plants that go like a month. Some of them go actually several months without being watered because they're just in places that they just don't need to be watered that much. So I don't really worry about them. But plants like that I can kind of forget about and then they really don't get watered and then they're a little bit like, what are you doing to me? I'm like, oh, it's just not the rainy season, I guess. We're having a drought this year. <laughs> So I'm going to cover watering when you're gone really quick because I feel like it's necessary information. There are a lot of tricks that you can do. I mean, for me, I never leave my house, so it's not really anything that I need to worry about usually. But if you're gonna be gone for like a two week span or even a three week span, uh, as long as your house is cool enough, they will be pretty much fine. But for your plants that need more water, like they will definitely need to be watered at two weeks or you're leaving at a weird time that it's like going to be time to water them soon. You can go ahead and water them a little bit early. Your plants generally, unless you're overwatering them already, they will be fine getting extra water that week. The roots can usually handle it. Some plants I'm sure are really sensitive, but all these like common plants, they're totally fine. Um, even, I mean, I have a couple of uncommon-ish, but not really that uncommon plants that they do fine because they're just the kind of plants that they are. I don't buy scary plants that take a lot of time and are needy. So as long as you don't have any of those kinds of plants, you can just go ahead and water them ahead of time if you need to, to help you get through that time a little bit longer. And you can put saucers underneath them with a little extra water or even have them up on the pebbles and have some water to create some humidity around them that can kind of help too or even if you just cluster them all together in the coolest part of your house as long as it doesn't get too cold of course as long as it's between the 50 and 70 degree range that i find is the temperatures that they don't use as much water and also the water is not going to be evaporating as quickly either um, another thing that you can do is put moss on top of your plants that use a lot of water because that's not going to be evaporating from the soil as quickly, so that can help some plants go longer. My aunt puts her plants in her bathtub and she puts some water in there, and that makes it to where she can leave them for a couple weeks and they are fine, or sometimes longer. And also, you could close the curtain and that creates some extra humidity around them as well. It kind of keeps it trapped in there when the water is evaporating, so that can be helpful. If you're worried about your plant getting too much water, you could have it like in a terracotta pot on top of a terracotta saucer, kind of flipped around so that way the water can kind of go into the saucer and then go into the pot. So that way it's getting a little bit extra water but not tons of water. It's not saturating the soil constantly, not as much as it would be. That could maybe work. I don't know, I've never tried it but it's just an idea I just had. I don't know. So your plants that you would need to do that with probably would be like, ferns and calatheas and uh, phytonias and um, just different kinds of plants that need a little bit of extra love and attention. How to test to make sure that your plants are ready to be watered. So for example, this little uh, th thematophyllum, whatever, this tree philodendron anyways, 
I just put my finger in there. You can see, let's see if it'll focus. There's a little bit of dirt on there and I put my finger in there pretty far down and there was a little bit of moisture, but these like to keep a little bit of moisture before you water them. So this is ready to be watered. It has dried out really nicely, but it's not completely dry, like not bone dry. You don't want most of your plants to be bone dry by the time you water them, but you want to give them at least a couple of inches to dry out so that way they can be happy. So when you put your finger in there, if it's damp, then don't water it. Although if it's like a fern, if it's a little bit dry, then you wanna water it. Like ferns, they wanna be watered usually more, even like my succulent -er types of ferns, like my... Hi, I know you want eggs. You can't have eggs, Gunther. Yeah, I already gave you an egg. So even like my Austral gem fern that is more succulent in the leaves, it needs to be watered when the soil is still a little bit more damp than like for my philodendrons. And my monstera seems to like that too. And same with my uh, pothos. My golden pothos doesn't really care as much, but my neon pothos, it definitely likes to have a little bit more water than my golden pothos. That being said though, my Boston ferns don't need to be watered that often because I have a nice thick layer of sheet moss on them and that holds in so much moisture that they stay really happy and they're growing and doing really good. I haven't been as successful with other kinds of ferns that aren't quite as hardy, but those like my Boston ferns and my Austral gem fern, those do really, really well in my house. Same with the different kinds of asparagus ferns like the plumosa and then the other one. I don't know, I accidentally killed my plumosa. I think actually I had lived out its lifespan and then I watered it too much and so that helped kill it a little sooner. <laughs> my other asparagus fern, it actually doesn't really care. I don't have any moss on it and it does just fine. I find that asparagus ferns though don't need moss on them. I doubt that anybody else would need moss on their asparagus ferns because I live in a really dry climate and I don't need moss on mine. I killed one doing that so don't put moss on your asparagus ferns. But my Boston ferns and my Austral gem fern really do well with that. My Austral gem fern for some reason actually uses more water even though it's more succulent than my Boston ferns. My Boston ferns on the other hand I only water them about every three to four weeks. I hardly water them at all. They just don't use that much water. I guess because they have such a thick layer of sheet moss on top, I really packed it in on those. So they just do really good that way. And then other plants like your succulents and your cactuses, most of them want to get really nice and dry before you water them. But some of them, like my string of pearls, those, I put them actually in a potting medium that was a mixture of houseplant regular soil and also cactus soil. So it's kind of like a, not quite a 50-50 blend because there's a little bit more regular potting soil in there, but enough to make it to where it could drain really quickly and then the water wouldn't sat stay saturated quite as long. So uh, those just actually need to be watered a little bit sooner than other succulents in general. Um, but I do water all my succulents pretty much every two weeks. Not every single one because like my Sansevierias and my ZZ plant, I only water those like every month or so. It just really depends. I kind of look at them and if the leaves look a little crinkly, then I water them. You can water your Sansevieria a little bit more if they are in a brighter spot because they're gonna be using more water, of course, and that way they will actually grow faster, but you don't want to have them in a too bright of a spot, but they can handle a lot brighter light than what is generally touted. <laughs> touted. <laughs> so all the plants that I have that go every two weeks without being watered are like my ferns. Um, my Austral gem fern I water every two weeks, whereas my Boston ferns, of course, I water those like every three weeks to once a month because they have so much moss on them, of course. Hoya and my Peperomia, I'm going to link them together because I figure how they the way that I test to see if they need water is the same. I just take their leaves and I kind of squeeze them a little bit and if they go in, then they need to be watered. If they stay rigid, then they don't need to be watered. And in general, after two weeks, they all need to be watered. So my Peperomia obtusifolia and my Peperomia obtusifolia variegata, my Peperomia orba, that one needs to be watered about every two weeks and I can test it that way. My Peperomia isabella, however, it has such tiny leaves, I can't, of course, tell. Um, I can't do the folding method with that. So what I do with that one instead, I just see if the leaves are kind of going in, 
then that's when I need to water it. My Peperomia Isabella is a little bit different though because it's not as succulent. I water that one really good and I give it actually a little bit extra water in its cash pot that it has and it seems to really like that and do much better that way, having a little extra water to carry it through the two weeks. If I watered that one once a week, letting it dry out in between and not giving it extra water, it's actually going to be happier that way. But I don't want to water that specific plant once a week, so I make it go longer. And that one seems to do just fine. It's thriving really wonderfully by me watering it every two weeks. It does look a little sad when I go a little longer, but it always bounces back and it's just fine. Some plants will just keep breaking down further and further every time you do that though. So things like your calatheas and your marantas and your ferns and uh, most kind of softer and more delicate plants don't come back that well from being droopy. For instance, my wire vine or my maidenhair vine, that one will die right, like if it shrivels down, then it's, it's not gonna come back. So what happens with your plants is when they lose too much moisture, that cell breaks down. And so once the moisture comes back into the leaf, then the cell will plump up, but not as much because the cell has been damaged. And every time you do that, it damages it further and further. Some plants are a lot more resilient to this, but then other plants like the wire vine are not very resilient to it at all. But there are some plants that seem really delicate that aren't as delicate too. So you really just need to have a little bit of trial and error with your plants, honestly. And then, I mean, plants that I've killed doing that are like uh, my pileas that are like the shiny pileas. Those ones don't like doing that very much at all. They don't come back very well. They'll come back about two times, but then after that they don't. So that's a pretty good example, I guess. But like succulents, they're made to be able to shrink back down and then plump back up because that's how they have their water reserves. So I water my pileas like all the way through and let them drain out and then I dump out the extra water. My Hoyas though, I bottom water them and then I let the water come up and then I tap the top and once it's nice and damp but not soaking, then I dump out the water. I like to bottom water my Hoyas simply because the one is hanging up and then the other one, I kind of planted it a little too high in the pot so it's just easier to bottom water it. But my nice big Hoya, I water that in like a circular motion so that way I get everything nice and drenched and then I let it to where just a little bit comes out the bottom of the pot and then I leave it. I don't water any more than that. Some plants though, you will need to water them really good to where the water goes all the way through and then the plant is going to soak that water back up. Things like my Dracenias because I only water them like every three months because I don't remember that often. <laughs> it's usually when the leaves are really drooping down, then I remember to water them. I do have one in a really dark, shady spot that it doesn't droop its leaves down and I water it like every four months usually. It's a little absurd how little I water these plants. So how I water my Dracenias is I pour in a bunch of water and then once I see the plant start popping up a little bit from it floating on the water below it, then I stop watering it and then it will soak it all up and then it'll be good for another few months. Sometimes, like in the spring, I do need to water it a little bit more than that, of course. I just watch it because sometimes they need to be watered once a month. Like if they're in a sunnier spot, they need to be watered probably at least once a month, maybe a little bit more depending on the type of Dracenia. I have really hardy, easy to care for Dracenias though, so I don't worry about them like at all. I just watch to see if the leaves are drooping down and I let them droop down a little bit more and then I water them. So what can happen with your plants is if you go too long without watering them, the soil dries out too much and if there's a lot of peat moss in there, the peat moss won't resaturate. You'll get some of the soil saturated around the outside but the inside won't and so your plant will still be too dry and it won't you know, thrive, it'll end up dying if you don't take care of that. So what you do is you can either water it a little bit and then come back and water it a little bit more. And then maybe you might need to come back and water it more again. But what I do is I have it in a saucer, I water it and then I let it soak up all that water. And then I will stick my finger in there and see if it soaked it well enough. And if it did it, I'll give it a little bit more water and then I'm usually good. 
Other plants that go really well are like my calathea upstairs. That one does good. In my experience, calatheas will go two weeks if you have them in a glazed pot. And if the pot is a little bit bigger for its size too, that can help as well. They like to be watered a little bit more on the sooner side of two weeks than the later side of two weeks, but they can go fairly long without being watered. Um, you may lose a few leaves because they don't like being stressed too much, but they grow back pretty quickly in my experience. Or if they do start leaving, losing too many leaves from you not watering it enough, then just start watering it a little bit more often and then you'll be fine. Well, unless it's just not happy and then sometimes they just die, but whatever. That's Calatheus for you. <laughs> So philodendrons, I water them a little bit differently than like my pothos and my whatever the silver pothos is called, scandapsis. So my philodendrons, I water them like I do my Hoya. Well, my big philodendrons, so like my this thematophyllum. Is this a thematophyllum? I'm pretty sure that's what a tree philodendron is called now. So I water it in like a circular motion and I let this only really soak in like part way and then it'll water it it'll eventually soak down to the bottom enough but depending on how many much roots are in there I don't want it to completely saturate the soil I want to make it nice and damp but not soaking I I've been watering this that way and it's been doing really 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 well I've been getting a lot of new growth and it's been making it really happy so I think that that is kind of the ticket for me for this, is to not let it get soaking, but to saturate well enough. I basically saturate it to the point that where my ferns usually need to be watered, which is kind of weird, but whatever. But like this one is in a nice big pot and it is glazed, so it's not going to dry out as fast and that seems helpful. If it was going to be in a terracotta pot, I would make sure that it was nice and soaked. So things like my philodendron Brazil, that is in a terracotta pot and it actually took it a few months for it to actually look happy. It was not happy for a long time, but I liked how it looked in that pot and so I made it sit there and suffer for a couple of months and now it's happy. It's thriving and I don't have to water it very often at all. It's just had to create some new roots that were adjusted to that and now it's happy. So it's really kind of cool how some plants can just adjust that way. Like my maiden hair vine, that one, I've killed multiples of them <laughs> because they're really difficult to take care of. But I figured out that if I would just make it go one more day and then the next week another extra day and then another extra day, like I just kind of weaned it off of being watered every week and it adjusted to that and now it's good. And I do the same thing with that as I do with my Peperomia Isabella. I give a little extra water in the bottom to help carry it through a little bit longer. All my other philodendrons though, I just water them like normal and make sure that there is a saucer underneath to catch any extra water. And then if it hasn't soaked up that water within the hour, then I dump it out and then, you know, we're fine. And philodendrons really seem to actually go quite a long time without being watered. They seem to do a little bit better than my neon pothos. My neon pothos needs to be watered fairly frequently. Same with my silver skindapsis. That one needs to be watered fairly frequently as well, but that's partially the pot that it's in and it's in a western window. So I have to take that down from the ceiling and water it in my bathtub. I don't do that as often. So my skindapsis is usually all like shriveled and unhappy, but it survives and it's doing just fine. It's still growing actually really well, even though most of the time it needs to be watered. But I need to honestly just put it in a new pot and then it'll do even better. There is a kind of pothos that is a little bit more high maintenance than the neon pothos, and that is your variegated pothos that are like the white variegation ones. So like Marble Queens, um, starts with an M, can't remember. And the pothos Enjoy, those kinds of pothos they can a little, be a little bit more finicky, especially like the Marble Queens. The Enjoys are definitely more hardy. I find that the Enjoy does a little bit better even than the Neon Pothos for me, but the Marble Queen and then that other one that starts with an M, whatever it's called, <laughs> can't remember at the moment, but those are a little bit more finicky and I have a harder time with them. They need to be watered a little bit more often and they benefit from a little bit of moss on top, in my experience. They're just 
they don't have as thick of leaves. I think that's part of the reason why the Neon Pothos doesn't do as well for me is because it doesn't have as thick of leaves, so it needs to be watered a lot more often. And I also find that the Neon Pothos does better when it has more room for its roots, so when there's extra soil around it, and I think that's mostly just because it can get more uh, moisture that way. When it gets overgrown and root bound, they don't do as well for me. They definitely need to be watered a lot more often. And that's just because the soil isn't as present, so there's not as much soil to hold on to moisture because there's so much more roots. In that same vein, there are Monsteras. I only have two kinds of Monsteras, the Deliciosa and an Adansonii. The Adansonii right now though is going through a phase because I tried to pot it up and it's not wanting to root in and so all the leaves are turning yellow and brown and it's awful but we'll see if it survives but my deliciosas on the other hand they do well in multiple different kinds of settings i find they can do well in terracotta or in a glazed ceramic pot without any drainage as long as you don't give it too much water of course and then also in a nice big glazed pot with drainage that does fine as well too um they like to be watered every two weeks with Monsteras, you can tell that they need to be watered because their leaves are drooping down and since they're upright, it's really easy to tell with those. So I will touch on alocasias. I only have one and I've only ever had one. They're supposed to be really easy to take care of and so far it seems really easy and I just water it when the leaves kind of start folding down. It's upstairs in my house and so I pretty much water it every two to three weeks and it seems happy if I water it a little bit more or a little bit less on those that two to three week scale, um, it does fine. It seems fine if I water it closer to two weeks, but it also seems fine if I water it closer to three weeks. It's really easy to tell when it needs to be watered because it will start folding down and drooping quite a lot, but it will slowly droop down and it can handle being drooped down for a while. So whenever I get around to it, I usually just water it and it's fine. I have mine in a really nice dark spot though, but it does have a grow light um, and it gets really warm upstairs in my house and it does fine. Um, my peace lily, I have one upstairs that's in a really big pot and what I do with that is I take it to my bathroom and I use my bidet. <laughs> my husband got a bidet sprayer thing um, with people buying all the toilet paper and stuff. He thought he needed to buy one and I use it to clean my shower. It works great for that and stuff because I don't have a shower head that comes off. So I guess you could use that instead to shower your plants because I find that the peace lilies like to be kind of rinsed off because they have such big leaves and it's easier just to rinse them off than to clean them. So I do that with it and then I also fill the reservoir basically because it's in its original pot and then also in a large ceramic pot. And then I fill that up about halfway and then I put it back in my room and then it's good for two to three weeks depending on how much water I gave it and how hot it gets in my room. The way to tell if a piece of lily needs to be watered is its leaves will start drooping down and then you just water it and they'll perk back up. And that one, it flowers for me actually quite frequently. I do have a grow light up there and it gets a little bit of that in some western light, but it's very filtered and so it's not getting anything intense but it does seem to be really happy, obviously, because it's flowering. I have another one in my bathroom upstairs, and that one always looks sad because I need to repot it. Peace lilies definitely do well in a little bit larger reservoir, and then also they will do really well being in a cash pot with some extra water in there. So I have another one downstairs in my living room in my dark corner, and that one does really good. It only needs to be watered about once a month because it has a nice big reservoir for water for it. And it's also in a really nice dark spot so it doesn't use as much water. So that's really nice having a plant that's a little harder to get to because it's behind a chair. So it's nice to have one that only needs to be watered about every four weeks. And that's about when I will water my Dracenia or I'll check on my Dracenia. Um, sometimes I'll wait an extra month to water that Dracenia of course. And so that's just usually when I check on that is when I notice that my peace lily needs to be watered back there. Another plant that is really easy to take care of is Tratoscanchus. However, I've had some that do better actually in my fish tank. So like the stripey kind of ones, those don't do as well. And then also my Bridal's Veil Tratoscancha didn't do as well getting southern light, but it does good getting being up higher in my window, getting western light, kind of behind a a curtain like a sheer curtain it does really good back there and I water that one every two weeks sometimes every three weeks 
because I don't really necessarily remember it and it does really good. It never shrivels up. When it was in my southern room, in my living room, it like was pretty far away from my southern window, but it needed to be watered all the time and it was still not very happy. So I put it in a little bit of a different spot and it just was fine. So sometimes you just need to move your plants around and see where they do the best and where they need to be watered the least. I have a purple heart tritoscantia that was in my laundry room up high on a shelf getting barely any northern light and it was still growing and doing just fine. Now it's below my western window getting probably about the same amount of light but it's doing just fine there too and it's still growing and I only water it every three weeks ish because I forget that it's down there. I would only water it about every three months when it was up in my laundry room though. It's growing more now though that it's getting more water than it was when it was in my laundry room. That is planted with an angel wing begonia that does just fine down there too getting the same amount of water. I have had them in multiple spots. Angel wing begonias are a plant that if I accidentally forget to water them for like three months and they look all crispy and dead, there is usually enough life still in the stem that they actually come back all the way for me. I've never had an angel wing begonia die on me, but I also only have two varieties and they're both shiny ones. So it might be different for other angel wing begonias, but they do really nicely on a two week watering schedule. And if you water them, of course, more than what will ultimately kill them, <laughs> <laughs> like I accidentally have done before. When I first had house plants that I had to always take care of myself about nine years ago, I mostly relied on my husband taking care of them and I would forget about them. And that is when I would pretty much almost always let my angel wing begonia almost die. But I still have that same plant and it's doing really good now, of course, because I actually take care of it. And it grows all the time and I cut off stems and I propagate them. They propagate super well, but they definitely grow really nicely on a two week watering schedule. Come here, I can snuggle. This is not what I meant by snuggling up there. Thank you. Lipstick plants do really nicely on a two week schedule, but they can go longer because they are more succulent. I do the same thing with those as I do with my Hoyas. I will kind of squeeze the leaves a little bit and if they fold in, then they need to be watered. And that works really nicely. I will give my lipstick plants a little bit of African Violet fertilizer every once in a while. So that way it'll help them to bloom eventually. But I don't give them that much because I'm working on them getting more green growth right now and I'm not as worried about them getting flowers. Um, my African Violets, on the other hand, I fertilize them every other time that I water them. So I fertilize them like once a month. And I bottom water my African Violets. So African Violets can get mushy leaves on the top. I find that if my house is more humid, the leaves are more prone to being mushy from water being on them. Otherwise, they'll just get a little bit of a burn spot on them if water stays on them too long and they're in a southern window. My African violets are a little crazy because they love being in southern windows. That's when they bloom the best and are the happiest. So I know that that's not necessarily what everybody does, but it's what I do because my African violets like it. I don't know why. Um, Hi, buddy. So when I bottom water my African violets, I now have enough little glass saucers underneath them that hold enough water to saturate them. So the way that I tell that my African violets are watered enough, I touch the top of them and if it's a little spongy but not saturated, it's just damp, then I will take the water off of them and then they're fine. The reason why I bottom water my Hoyas is not for anything considering the leaves, it's just simply because it's convenient for me to wa to bottom water them. I do actually like to mist my uh, Hoyas and I will even take them to the shower and rinse them off sometimes too because they seem to like it and it's easier to clean them that way. African violets are just a little finicky. I have watered them from the top before though when I didn't have as many of them and what I would do because I would make sure that there was a nice big lip in the soil so that way I could reach my hand in there and lift up the leaves and then water it enough that the water could pool up and then drain down and I'd have to stand there and hold the leaves up for like a minute or two waiting for the water to go down. So bottom watering everything is just a lot more convenient of course too. Another way that you can bottom water your African violets is by taking a cake pan that has a nice 
amount of space for you to put water in there. You can put the fertilizer in with that water, of course, and you have all your African violets in there, and then once they're all nice and damp on the top, then you move them back to where they're supposed to be. I've also had arrowhead plants. I have only one that actually does really well for me. I think that I don't have the right lighting in my house for the other kinds that I've had before, whereas the one that I have is like a green and white variegated arrowhead plant. And well, I don't know if it's necessarily variegated, but it's green with like white lines in it. That arrowhead plant does really nicely in my southern window, and I water about every two weeks. I do forget about it, and I'll go an extra week sometimes, but it handles that better when it's a little cooler in my house. It doesn't do that as well in the spring. I definitely need to water every two weeks in the spring, otherwise it's not happy. But that's most of my plants, because just spring is just a weird time of the year where they just want more water because it's just gotten warmer and they're adjusting to everything. The rest of the year, my plants just do better. Oxalis or the like the clover plants those can be a little weird but they definitely like to be watered every two weeks. I've never been the most successful with oxalis but this year I've had mine in my living room and we've had an HVAC in there to keep it extra cool during the fires and stuff because we couldn't have our swamp cooler on and so because all the smoke would get in the house and it was like actually really not good but my um my oxalis seems to be benefiting really well from having a little bit of cooler temperatures where it's been and I water every two weeks and it does fine. Oh, so I don't have a croton anymore. I mean, I still do. It's dead in my husband's workroom because I didn't water it for like two months and I, well, okay. I didn't water it because I, I only water that plant like once a month. It would take me at least a month to water all my plants in my husband's workroom. I still have a couple in there and it still takes me that long, but my croton actually did really well in there. It was in a eastern window and getting lots of bright light, of course, and I never moved it. And I would just water it like once a month. It was in a pot that had extra water in there and so it had a little bit of a reservoir. And it did really good until somebody knocked it over and killed it. So there's that. But um, crotons, once you get them in a spot that they're happy, don't move it. <laughs> and apparently they do well having a cash pot that holds extra water. Spider plants are another plant that's really easy. You just water them every two weeks. The one in my bedroom is in a warmer spot, of course, because it's upstairs, but it doesn't get a lot of bright light. And so, I don't know, it seems fine with me watering it about every three weeks. Those plants up there are a little bit less maintenance because I've forced them to be and they're Totally fine. I did accidentally kill a Peperomia obtusifolia variegata up there because I completely forgot about it for like two months and it was not happy. But everybody else seems totally fine up there. Spider plants like to have a decent amount of light, but they can do really well in like an eastern area and have, or like a northwestern area or something, and or even a northern window. And as long as that room is cooler, they can go I've had mine go like a month without being watered and it was fine. So sometimes even longer, just whenever I felt like watering it, I would. My craft room stays really nice and cool. And so when I had a spider plant in there, I did move it into my room eventually. But when it was in there, it did really good. And I watered it about every two months because it's so cool in there during the winter when I had it in there that it didn't need to be watered very often at all. Plus it wasn't really growing that much because it was winter and it was nice and cool. Orchids are a little bit different because they're epiphytic plants, right? And so an orchid needs to be watered really thoroughly, but also it needs to have a little bit of period to dry out. So sometimes, depending on where you live, you might only water your orchid once a month. But for me, I water my orchids every other week and they do really great. I currently have three orchids. One of them I water from the top, of course, with just a pitcher into a saucer and I let that drain and then I pour the water back over on top of it and let it drain again. And then I pour the water out onto my rubber tree and it's happy. My other orchid that's hanging up, I take it to my sink and then I let the water run through it really good and saturate it and then I let it drain out and then I hang it back up. I have another one on my counter that doesn't get a lot of sunlight but it seems totally happy over there. And I just water it like every, what are you doing? I water it about every two weeks and it's totally fine. I water that orchid with water that's left over from someone's cup before I put it in the dishwasher and 
I just kind of drizzle it every once in a while and it seems totally fine. So I think orchids just are subjective depending on where you live, what part of your house they're in, and how much humidity they have for sure. Um, so I don't know. That's really all that I have to tell you about orchids. I fertilize them when they are putting on a bloom spike and while they're blooming and then I don't fertilize them any other time. And also I will rinse them really thoroughly four times a year in the sink to help get rid of the extra salts that may have built up in the potting medium. Two more regular houseplants that aren't succulent is my grape ivy and regular ivy. So my regular ivy is no longer with us. It has gone the way of the dust. <laughs> My ivy got too warm and it killed it. Ivies like to be in a nice cool spot, getting bright indirect light and having enough humidity to keep away spider mites. So I kept mine in my shower and it did really good from like the summer through the winter, but then once it got too warm in the spring and I didn't realize how hot it actually had gotten upstairs, it died. It had a little piece left, but it wasn't really enough to keep it going and so it finally bit the dust. But ivies like to be watered about like every two weeks they do fine with that and if you have them in a nice uh, ceramic pot they can go a little bit longer but you don't want to oversaturate them because if you overwater them they can get rot rot and die but they you know are pretty easy to take care of if they're in a nice cool spot and have enough humidity otherwise they are impossible to take care of, so there you go. <laughs> My grape ivy is supposed to be easier to take care of than a regular ivy because they don't get spider mites as much, but I find that it actually needs more water than a regular ivy does. Grape ivies are not the same as an ivy, they're actually a cissus, but you know, they actually seem to have similar care in a lot of ways, except that the cissus can actually go in like a little bit warmer of a space but it needs to be watered more frequently if it's in a warmer spot. It's just not prone to spider mites like uh, ivies are. So that's helpful, but it's still more needy than other plants because if it doesn't get enough water, then the leaves start dropping off and then it's just, it's crazy. They seem to go through a hard adjustment period going from the greenhouse to a home environment. I have both of my grape ivies in uh, ceramic pots so that way they keep enough water and also I don't keep extra water in the bottom because if they stay too saturated, then they can start dropping leaves also. They're just temperamental. Kind of like crotons, but yeah, actually a lot like crotons in that way. But my croton did really good in that western window having extra water. And I think that's just because I forced it to be that way. You know, plants just can be forced to do what you want, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes unless they're an ivy. Okay, now let's get into a little bit more succulent types of plants. The rest of these will be more succulent types. Um, I have gone over a few, of course, like the peperomias and the hoyas. Um, I do need to go over my Pilea peperomioides really quick though. Um, that one actually, even though it's is kind of succulent, in my experience, it needs to be watered sooner on the two week mark rather than later and it just likes more water than my other semi-succulent plants. My Pilea mollis, though, is not succulent, of course, but it can droop all the way down, and I water it, and it picks back up. Every once in a while, I'll lose a branch from it happening, from that happening, but it does really fine, and it likes to be in a little bit of a darker indirect light spot, and they grow really crazy and fast and beautifully, and they trail down like this big old mane of I don't know. I like my Pilea mollus a lot. So let's cover my ficuses now. I have a uh, rubber tree and I have a variegated rubber tree and I also have a fiddle leaf fig. My fiddle leaf fig does great. It needs to be watered a little bit more often than my other ficus, but it only needs to be watered about every two weeks and once the leaves start drooping down, that's when I know to water it and I just water all the way around it, let it saturate it and drain and then I dump out the extra water. My ficus elastica, is it a ruby or something? It actually kind of changes color sometimes. Sometimes it's darker in color and sometimes it's lighter in green. Right now it's lighter in green, which is weird, but it's not as stressed. During the summer, it was like having a harder time keeping its leaves, leaf shape and it was darker, but now it's brighter green and the leaf shape is really nice. I keep that in a ceramic pot and it does really well in there. I water it 
about once a month and it's really happy. Usually in the winter though, I can go about two months without watering it. It is getting a little bit big though for its pot, so it needs to be watered a little bit more than it used to. When I first got it and I put it in that pot, I didn't water it all winter long and it did just fine. My variegated rubber tree though, it's not very happy. It's in a terracotta pot and I think that's part of the problem. It didn't do as well in a smaller uh, ceramic pot and I think that was a problem too. I think that they like to have a little bit bigger of a ceramic pot than what I would normally put it in and not to be watered too much and have really nice drainage. My regular rubber plant does really well having lots of nice drainage in its pot and not being water overly watered and being in a terracotta pot the variegated one needs to be a little bit overwatered for it to have enough water and it's just not good. So I don't want to have to water every week so I do overwater it a little bit and I think that's not good for it. So, so I either need to water it every week and then slowly make it to where it can be watered every other week and not oversaturated of course or I need to put it in a ceramic pot that has lots of nice drainage and not overwater it. I think. I'm not sure. It's kind of weird. Pretty much all my other succulent plants, like my jade plants, my echeverias, my sedums, my aloes, my haworthias, all of them, I have a few other types of varieties, they all like to be watered about every two weeks. Um, they can go three weeks and be just fine. Uh, my jade plants, I have one that I water about once a month because that one is in my laundry room and it's a little cooler in there sometimes. Depends on the time of the year, honestly. It gets really cool in there in the winter time, but it's in a really shady spot. It's not getting a lot of direct light because it's getting light from a northern window and not, it's not very close to the northern window. So it only needs to be watered about every month. But my other jade plant, they're both ogre ears. That one needs to be watered every two weeks because it's in my living room getting lots of bright southern light. I'm not as successful with other jade plants though, so but I'm guessing they're about the same. <laughs> um, they're all pretty easy to take care of, but the ones that flower, I give them fertilizer every other time that I water them. So once a month, I will fertilize my flowering succulents. And I give them an Espoma fertilizer that is organic because I don't want to over fertilize them since I fertilize them so often, I feel like anyways. Um, and I do it half strength and they do really well with that. They all pretty much bloom at least four times a year. And then my cactuses, which I water about once a month, and every other time that I water them, like every two months, I will fertilize them. And they do really well on that, and they're pretty much always in bloom. I don't know why, but they just never stop blooming. At least the ones that like to bloom, like my um, mammillarias, they love to bloom all the time. My guppy plant, on the other hand though, is the only one that seems to like to be watered a little bit more often. It's kind of like my string of pearls, so I kind of take care of it the same way that I take care of my string of pearls and my string of bananas and those types of plants. I will water it a little bit more often. It would probably do totally fine in a ceramic pot. Most of my plants, I like to keep them in terracotta, but some of them just do better in ceramic. So you really just have to gauge on where you live and how your plants are. If you live in a really humid environment, I bet you they would all do really good in terracotta. But for me, with things being so dry here, and depending on the potting medium that I use, if I use a, a cactus medium for like a guppy plant or a string of pearls, then I want to put it in a glazed ceramic pot. If I use a normal houseplant medium, which isn't necessarily advisable, but if you, that's all you have and that's what you use, then you'll wanna probably put it in a terracotta pot if you live in a dry climate like me. But if you live in a humid climate, I would always err on the side of caution and start out with a more lofty, well-draining soil in a terracotta pot and then go from there. If it seems like it needs to be watered all the time, then you can always go ahead and repot it and have some trial and error, experiment with it and see how it goes. And I also want to mention my stick plant that I have. I have a couple of them. I have one that's in a southern window in a small pot and I water that one every two weeks. I have another one that's away from my southern window but still getting southern light in a nice big pot and I water that one about once a month. I learned this trick with my epiphytic uh, cactuses, so my Christmas cactus and my Thanksgiving cactus, is that I water them and I fertilize them on the same schedule as all my other succulents until it gets to be the fall, and then I don't water them at all, 
and that kicks them into blooming. So once it gets cooler and they're not getting as much water, then they will bloom and then they're pretty, I guess, and then I start watering them again when they're done blooming. Sometimes if the soil seems extra dry, I will go ahead and water them a little bit before they're done blooming too. So just depends. All right. So lastly, I want to talk about fertilizer a little bit more. For all of my normal house plants, I use stick fertilizers for them. I use the Job's uh, house plant fertilizer sticks and I pretty much, I mean it tells you how many to use on the directions per your plant, but I kind of think of it as a pie and for each piece of pie that's in my pot, I will stick a stick in there. So if a plant is like only the piece of a pie, then I break the stick in half and I put it on one side and one on the other side. You could probably just stick it in there wherever, but I don't like to damage the roots at all, so I put it more towards the outside edges and you know, have one on each side. Some of my pots, of course, are really small, depending on what kind of um, a plant I have in it, and so I'll do just half of one in there. For big plants like my rubber tree and my monstera and then this thematophyllum, I use like six to eight in them because they're such big pots but they work really well and they help my plants to do really really good i just find that they really help also my husband likes to raise worms he has all sorts of different kinds that he grows like mealworms and black soldier flies and red worms and he will of course make compost with them so when he gets out the worm castings to put in the garden i take some of them and i put them on my plants and so i usually will do that in the early fall and like the late spring is usually kind of when i do that it just depends on whenever he gets out the worm castings and i only put them on my really big plants I put worm castings in new soil when I'm repotting a plant though too. You can make compost tea with the worm castings. You can kind of mix it in with some water and water your plants with that. So that way you don't have to worry about, you know, whether it's getting into your soil or not as easily, I guess. I have used the all-purpose fertilizer from Espoma for my, some of my plants too. I will normally only use that for plants that have had time to adjust to my house and then I want to give them a little quick start to growing. I normally just use that on plants that have been in their pots for a long time and haven't been repotted and I just want to give them a, an extra little bit of fertilizer, um, but that's about all that I ever do with that. I have used Buffalo's compost tea and oh my goodness, that is really good. My plants love that so much, but they don't sell it where I live anymore, so I haven't used that for a long time. But if you can get Buffalo, that is a really nice compost tea to use for organic fertilizer for your plants as well. But by all means, you don't need to do that many different kinds of fertilizer. I just like to give an extra boost to my really big plants and I like to use the fertilizer sticks and all my other normal house plants because it just makes them super happy and grow really well. All right, I think that that's all that I have for this video. I'm sure that it's really long at this point, so I hope that you got some valuable information from this, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. But yeah, I hope you have a really great week, and I will talk to you later. Bye!